Hamlet again my friends, welcome back to an ongoing series where I talk you through my exotic loot drops from the weekly Nightfall Strikes and Crow to Zen raids, so without further ado, let's begin. Now for my first Nightfall Strike, I bag myself, brace yourselves, 8 Ascendant Shards, hurrah, I'll add those to my other 379 trillion Ascendant Shards, <laughs> Now my fire team proved a little luckier. Little Bigoki got the chance, a legendary hand cannon, and Moochie got the skull of Dai Amkara, an exotic warlock helmet. For my second nightfall strike, I got Hide and Seek 42, a legendary shotgun that, if I'm honest, I'm never gonna use. Again, my fire team had better luck. Bywolf bagged himself the ATSA Arachnid, an exotic hunter helmet. An unknown player got Void Fang Vestments, exotic chest armor for the warlock. And for my third Nightfall Strike, I got 8 Strange Coins. My pal Unknown Player got Harm's Way, a legendary heavy machine gun. So all in all, a pretty poor run of luck. However, my Crota's end loot drops proved to be a little more exotic. Let's have a look at them. Now, this is my first raid run after the weekly reset, and as you can see, I'm just about to deliver the final crushing blows to a kneeling Crota. Now, for some odd reason, the exotic loot drop didn't show on screen. However, I bagged myself the Mida Multitool, an exotic scout rifle, the upgraded version with a higher attack, so yeah, I was actually quite pleased with that. So then, let's have a look at this weapon in more detail. So here it is, the Mida Multitool. Now, to be honest, I never use scout rifles. I'm more of a hand cannon kind of guy, but I have to admit, I really like this weapon. It has an excellent rate of fire, good impact and stability, and a super quick reload speed. Now let's have a look at this thing for perks. First up, we have Third Eye. Radar stays active while aiming down this weapon's sights. This is always a useful perk to have for your weapon. It also has Lightweight. When held, this weapon grants plus two character agility. Quick Draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. And my personal favourite, Field Scout, which adds six more bullets in the clip, allowing you to take down large enemy mobs without having to constantly reload. And this thing's unique perk, Mida Multitool. This weapon boosts move speed and fires on a hair trigger. Now, firing on a hair trigger basically increases this weapon's rate of fire, but if I'm honest, I didn't notice any significant difference after I activated this perk. So then, let's have a look at this thing in action. Now, the Mida Multitool is an excellent PvE weapon. If you're accurate with your shots, this thing is lethal. You can take down numerous enemies without having to reload and often with bullets to spare. Now, the Mida performs best at mid to long range and it's an absolute joy picking off enemies from a safe distance. Now as you can see I take down a small mob of Vex before confronting a Praetorian and dismantling his robotic ass all with one clip. Like I said before I don't often use scout rifles but this seems to have become my go to patrol weapon. It's just a shame it doesn't have solar arc or void damage. And as a random side note, don't you just love it when a random patrol chest gives you unexpectedly sweet loot? Thank you RNGesus, that'll do nicely. So then, how does the Mida perform in the Crucible? Let's have a look. Now, like I said before, the Mida is an excellent mid to long range weapon and you stand a very good chance of dropping your enemies if you land your shots. Having said that, Hawkmoon is still my go-to PvP weapon, and if given the choice between this weapon and Saurus Regime, well, I'd pick Saurus Regime. However, this weapon becomes a contender on larger maps with longer lines of sight. For smaller maps, forget about it. In conclusion, the Mida Multitool is a great addition to your exotic arsenal. And here I am bashing in Crota Skull for a second time, the poor green bastard. And just like in my first raid run, for some reason, my exotic loot drop didn't show on screen. But I was lucky enough to bag myself Universal Remote, an exotic shotgun. So then, let's have a look at this weapon in more detail. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that Universal Remote is the only shotgun in the game that you can equip in your primary slot. Now, I love shotguns, but if I'm honest, I'm really disappointed with this weapon. It has a terrible rate of fire, poor reload speed, and it takes up your precious primary slot, a slot where you want a reliable all-round weapon. So then, let's have a look at this thing's perks. It has Crowd Control, kills with this weapon, grant bonus damage for a short time. It has Hammered Forged, improved range and accuracy. And the reason I choose this perk is because without it, it has terrible range. It has Lightweight, when held this weapon grants plus two character agility, and Snapshot, aiming this weapon is incredibly fast, and it also has this unique perk, Universal Remote. Range and precision damage increases greatly while aiming down the sights. Now, I'm not a fan of aiming down sights with a shotgun. I just want to get up close and personal and pull the trigger, so I never really get much use from this perk. For me, Swordbreaker, a legendary shotgun you gain as a random loot drop after defeating Crota, is by far the better option. And it allows you to use an exotic in your primary or secondary slot. And if I had to choose between Universal Remote and Invective, I'd choose Invective every time due to its full auto mode. Still, 
let's have a look at this thing in action. Now, like I said before, Universal Remote's sluggish rate of fire and reload speed really put me off this weapon. I want an all-round reliable body dropper in my primary slot, and this shotgun certainly isn't that. Yes, aiming down the sights increases the range and precision damage, but to be honest, I'd rather shoot from the hip, and I found it didn't really perform any better in the Crucible. Guys, am I missing something here? Is this weapon a worthy exotic? I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, so please leave a comment and let me know. In conclusion, this weapon is probably best left in the vault. And guys, I thought I'd end this video by showing you that I finally hit Crota's Bane rank 4. It took an effing long time, but I finally got there, and when you hit rank 4, as you can see, you max out. You can't go any further than that. There's no rank 5. So what does rank 4 mean when you finally get that? Well, it means you can buy this, the sun setting armor shader. I'll show you that in more detail in just a moment. And it also means you can swap radiant energy for radiant shards and vice versa. And I actually want radiant shards, so I'm going to purchase that. That's actually really useful being able to do that. Now, let's have a look at that radiant, sorry, let's have a look at that shader in more detail. As you can see, this is the sun setting shader. It's pretty cool. It's got very vibrant yellow glow to it, like the sun. I guess that's why it's called that. And this is the Erismorn emblem that you get for reaching Crota's Bane rank 4. I actually really like it. Quite distinctive. Um, and there you go. I thought you'd enjoy seeing that. Um, and that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you did enjoy this video, you may very well like my other Loot Drop videos, part 1 and 2. Simply click the on-screen image or follow the link in the description box below. And guys, if you like to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny news, photos and juicy tidbits of info, feel free to follow me on Twitter, at MoreConsole. Link is also in the description box below. And guys, stay tuned for a very cool Halo 5 competition coming soon on my channel. You can win some very nice prizes. And that, my friends, really does bring us to the end of the video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed enjoyed it, subscribe for daily Destiny content, and thanks for watching, you beautiful bastards. And as always, until next time, Guardians.